Ladies and gentlemen, will you please give your very best welcome to Mrs. Shuffleweight. <laughs> My lovelies, <laughs> are you enjoying yourselves? Yes. Good, I'll soon put a stop to that. <laughs> now, I'd better introduce myself to those of you who have not had the pleasure of seeing me before. Mrs. Shufflewick is the name, star of stage, screen, radio and television, labour exchange and dope parties. <laughs> and part-time topless barmaid <laughs> at the frog and nightgown in the Bulls Pond Road. <laughs> now, I'm going to start by singing you a song that I've had the pleasure of singing <laughs> before the Duke of Edinburgh and the Duke of York and the Duchess of Kent and quite a few other well-known London pubs. <laughs> <laughs> Falling in love again Never wanted to What am I to do? I can't help it Look at the f dust up there. <laughs> Love's always been my game, play it how I may, I was made that way, I can't help it. Men cluster to me <laughs> like moths around a flame and if their wings burn <laughs> I know I'm not to blame Falling downstairs again <laughs> Never wanted to What am I to do? I can't help it Oh, oh my God, I'm very pleased to be here very pleased to be able to be here. <laughs> <laughs> now, I spent a long day yesterday shopping. A low price of food, my God. Do you know, yesterday morning, I, now this is without a word of a lie, I went out yesterday morning, I bought half a pound of margarine and a package of ginger biscuits <laughs> and f four bottles of gin. <laughs> And you know it came to near, nearly 24 pounds. <laughs> I shall have to give up those ginger biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, the thing is, if you don't go out and spend it, someone comes round and asks you for it. <laughs> Do you know, the, the other morning, I, 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 was, I was in my front room dusting my uh, best coffee service, <laughs> which I might add used to belong to the Baron Rothschild. I know that because his initials are still on the sides of the car. <laughs> and suddenly th there was a knock at the bell and I went to the door. <laughs> And there, there was this woman stood there shaking a collecting box, you know, I, 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 and she said, the Battersea dog's home. I said, I didn't know the thing had been away. <laughs> 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 
But I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have given you anything, quite honestly, because um, I, I'm not all that mad about dogs. Well, I, I used to have one myself years ago, during the First World War, <laughs> in case any Huns came. <laughs> thank God they didn't. Thank you. And um, <laughs> now the thing that put me on off dogs, I tell you what it was. I went into a pub one night. You know, I'm, I'm not usually one to go into public houses. But this particular night, I was walking along and I, I felt a bit faint. So I thought, I'll, I'll go in and have a, a large brandy and put my head between the governor's legs for a few minutes. <laughs> and I was stood there with my brandy and I suddenly looked down and in front of the fireplace was this large Dalmatian dog lying on its back, licking its parts. <laughs> well, honestly, I, I didn't know what to do with myself. I, I thought, I, I, I wish the ground would open and swallow me up, because it didn't. <laughs> and suddenly I, I felt a nudge in my back. And I turned round and there's this big six-foot Irishman stood there. And he said to me, I wish I could do that, Mrs. I said, well, if you give it a biscuit, it might let you. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, you see, you see the most peculiar things in pubs. Do, do you know, I, I went in a pub one morning and um, I, I was stood there with my Guinness and a man came in, he looked at uh, the sort of, you know, soul of uh, epitome, and um, <laughs> he got this sort of pinstripe suit on and a bowler hat and an umbrella and a briefcase, and he went up to this uh, woman behind the bar who, who was rather sort of staid and stolid. She was all done out in black bombazine and a rope of pearls and everything. And he went up to her and he said, uh, tickle your ass for the feather. <laughs> And she said, I beg your pardon. And he said, it's particularly nasty weather. <laughs> and she said, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I misconstrued what you said at the moment. <laughs> anyway, he, he had a last whisky and he sat down. And um, suddenly, this little Irish fella came out of the corner. And he went up to him and he said, excuse me, sir. He said, did I hear you rightly when you went off to that barmaid and you said, tickle your ass with a feather? And then when she asked you what you said, you said, uh, you know, it's particularly nasty. Well, he said, oh, yes, he said, I always do that, you know, start the day with a laugh, have a giggle and all that, you know. And so this large fellow went off and he went in the other bar. Well, I could see him through the mirrors, you know. And he, he was practicing this. I could see him and, and he kept knocking back large whiskies. And he, he was in the corner there and he was saying, particularly your ass with a fellow. <laughs> Uh, particularly nasty, uh, 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 particularly nasty, uh, particularly. And anyway, he was about 20 minutes doing this, and he came back blind drunk in the saloon bar, and he went up to this woman, the black bombazine one, <laughs> and she said, Yes, sir. And he said, uh, Stick a feather up your ass. <laughs> And she said, I beg your pardon. And he said, it's raining like fuck outside. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, all, all the pubs, all the pubs down my way, you know, it's just like Coronation Street. I, I mean, everyone knows how many sleep in a bed and all that. And I go, well, of course, I go every morning at, uh, on the docks at 11 o'clock. And um, I meet all my friends in there. I met a very old uh, lady friend of mine, Gladys, her name is, very nice woman. And I, we, we were having a chat and all that. And she said, I'm, I'm a bit, bit worried, dear. She said, I said, what's the matter then? So she said, well, uh, I don't know what it is, but my, my old man, she said, he, he seems to have gone off sex. 
I said, well, why is that? Oh, she said, I don't know. She said, every time I, I ask him, he's either his back's bad or he's got a, got, got a headache, you know, or he's got to get up in the morning and all that balls. So I said, well, I said, what you need, actually, are some pills to get him going. I said, now, you're very lucky because uh, my husband was just the same when he came out of the army. I don't know what it was, it was something he gave him in the tea or something, you know. And I said, he gave me some pills, and I've still got some at home. I said, I'll bring them down for you tonight. So I took them down for her the same night. And I said, now look, I said, you put two of these in his tea, and um, don't, let it, don't let it on, just put them in when he's not looking. And I said, I'll guarantee you, you'll, you'll be all right after that. So I, I met her, oh, I suppose about three or four days later. I said, and, and, oh, she said, she's got a smile on her face, you know. <laughs> I said, how'd you get on? Oh, she said, marvellous. She said, you know, she said, I, I went back, she said, I put six in his coffee. I said, six? Oh, she said, yes, I put six in, make sure. <laughs> oh, she said, it, do you know, she said, it wasn't five minutes before he had me over that table. And he was at me like a flock of sparrows, and <laughs> she, she said, she said it, it was marvellous. She said, we, we, we never finished for about 45 minutes. But she said, the only thing is, we shan't be able to go into that cafe again. <laughs> And I met a, I met another lady lady friend of mine in in, in the pub the other morning. She, she she was in tears, poor old cow. <laughs> no, she was. And I, I said, what's what's that? Oh, she said the old man. She said he's gone. I said, what's he left? You? <laughs> no, she said he's passed away. I said, what 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 was that, Arthur? Well, she said last Sunday. She said, I was doing the dinner and I asked him to go down to the bottom of the garden to cut me a cauliflower. <laughs> no, listen, and she said, he, he was bending over to cut this cauliflower and he had a heart attack, just like that, and he went, finish. Oh, I said, whatever did you do? Did oh, well, she said, we had to open a tin of peas. <laughs> Ah, well, that, that's life, you see. It's all part of life's so its pageant. I had an, another friend of mine in there one morning. She, she, she's a, well, I wouldn't say she was daft, but she, she, she's uh, a, a bit stupid. And um, she'd lost her dog, which she'd had for, oh, I don't know, about 45 years or something. <laughs> mangy old thing it was. Um, she said, what am, I, what am I going to do? So I, I said, well, get yourself another pet. Oh, she said, I, cu I couldn't have another dog. She said, I don't think I could take to another dog. So I said, well, get, get something different. I said, get, get yourself a budgery gar. So she said, do, do you really think? I said, yes, I do. I, I think so. Nice budgery gar. I said, get a nice one that talks and you can have sort of, uh, you know, conversations in that in the evenings. So um, she did that and uh, I found this out afterwards. She'd been down this pet shop and she'd asked for this budget guy and, and the bloke had said, well, we've got some very nice canary ones here. That's from the Canary Islands, you know. <laughs> Not interbred with the canary birds, of course. And she said, uh, he, he told her that it'd be £45. So she said, all right then, uh, I'll have that. And he said, of course, madam, you'll want a cage. And she said, how much is that? He said, well, that would be another 50 So she said, all right then, yes, pass them up, I'll, I'll have the two. So she got the budget guy and the cage, and she said, before she was going out the shop, she said, can it talk? Oh, he said, talk. He said, you, you won't be able to stop it once it starts. So she went back home, and she went back to the shop the next morning, and she said, uh, that bird you sold me, 
so he hasn't said a word yet. So he said, well, he said, um, you, you've got to give it a bit of encouragement. He said, what you really need is uh, in the cage a little um, ladder, you know, so that it can run up and down, and then it'll have something to talk to you about. <laughs> so she said, how much are the ladders? And he said, well, they are £2.50. So she said, all right, I'll take one, and I'll take your word for it, it's going to talk. <coughs> he said, oh, don't worry about that, it'll talk all right. So she took the ladder, she was back again in the shop the next morning, she said, it still hasn't said anything. He said, did it run up and down? Oh, she said, it ran up and down the ladder. <laughs> he said, well, he said, I, t I tell you what, he said, take my advice. He said, get a little mirror. And he said, when it runs up the ladder and has a look in the mirror, it'll see its reflection and it'll think it's another bird and it'll start talking. So she said, how much are the mirrors? And he said, well, they are £2.50. So she said, all right, I can't really afford it, but I'll, I'll run to it, I'll, I'll have the mirror. So she got the mirror and she went back, and of course, same thing happened again. She went back the next morning, uh, no talk. So uh, he said, now, what about a trapeze? He said, get it to swing from one side of the cage to the other, jump on the ladder, <laughs> run up and have a look in the mirror, and come down, and if it doesn't say anything, then, well, you've had it. <laughs> so she said, how much the trapeze? He said, uh, they're, they're another 350. <laughs> so she got the trapeze. Anyway, I won't go on. She went on and on and on. She got this <laughs> cage full of... <laughs> full of... It looked like Bertram Mill's circus. <laughs> and she'd had, she'd had this bird about six months. <laughs> And she went back one morning and said, here, she said, you, you know that bird, what you sold me? She said, it's dead. He said, no, no, is it? She said, it is dead. He said, my God. He said, and didn't it speak at all? And she said, yes, it did. Just before it went, it looked up at me and it said, don't they sell any fucking bird seed down <laughs> Now, I'm going to pop off from this first half because I've left a large gin going cold and I had one knocked over once in 1927. <laughs> and I still wake up screaming about that. I don't know if I'm going to do the strip on the other side. It all depends on the state of the underwear. <laughs> They were all right at Easter, so <laughs> I, I think they'll be all right now. But uh, you'll have to wait and see. So um, enjoy yourself. Now, if you want to take this opportunity of nipping home for a couple of blankets <laughs> and a few sandwiches, you've got about 25 minutes. OK? Bye-bye. <laughs> Uh, there, there's a couple in my street where I live. On the street where you live. And, um, no, uh, this fellow was a bit, bit of a tear away, and they were the only house in the street 
not to have a coloured television set. So, one day he'd been on the piss. <laughs> so he came over and he said to his wife, he said, well, it, to put it mildly, he said, to hell with this. <laughs> he said, I, I'm, not, I'm not going on like this, you know, the black and white thing. He said, I, I want to... <laughs> He said, I want a coloured one, so he, he, he said, I'm going down, I'm going to get one on the hour purchase. So she said to him, she said, John, you can't. She said, you haven't worked for 18 months. She said, they won't, won't give you anything on hire purchase, you know that. He said, he said, I'm going down. <laughs> so he went, and sure enough, he came back about half an hour later, and he got this van with a fella in it, and the fella opened the back doors of the van and he pulled out this 20-inch, you know, coloured television set. <laughs> yeah. And he took it in the house and he put it in their front room and he plugged it in, beautiful picture and everything, and it was all, all beautiful. And the man said, now, sir, he said, uh, you realise, of course, that uh, tonight there'll be someone round, you know, to see about the uh, payments. He said, oh, don't worry about that. He said, he said be, be all right. He said, don't, don't bother. And the little fellow went away with his van, and the man said to his wife, he said, now, listen, Mabel. Because <laughs> uh, he knew her, you see. <laughs> he said, now, listen, he said, when this bloke comes tonight, he said, you tell him that I am not in and he said tell him that I'm working down the docks and I earn 200 pounds a week and I don't get home till about two o'clock in the morning he said have you got that in your navel so she said right so he went off and uh, sure enough about half past seven that night there was a knock on the door and the woman went and there's a bloke stood there you know with, with a briefcase and everything and he said, is, is Mr. Anderson in? <laughs> and she said, no, I'm awfully sorry he's not. She said, uh, he works on the docks and he's there till two o'clock in the morning and he earns 200 pounds a week. And the man said, oh, well, I'm very pleased to hear that. He said, when he does come in, he said, will you tell him that the gentleman from the Social Security Court... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you've, got to be, you've got to be clever these days, haven't you? Do you know, I, I've, o I've often thought to myself that I, I, I shall have to go out to work. <laughs> I can't make this do for a living, dear. I, I did it, uh, what, about three months ago. I, I took the bull by the horns. <laughs> I, th I thought to myself, I'll, I'll do something I've never done in my life, and I'll go down to the Labour Exchange. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, I, I thought, uh, well, you might as well. So I, I, everyone else does it, I thought, I'll do it. So I went down to the Labour Exchange, a place I'd never been in before, and I, I sat on this bench I sat there f for about half an hour and then this old cow behind the bar, <laughs> oh, she was, my God, she, uh, she, she called me over, she said, shuffle week, you know, no missus or please or anything, you know. <laughs> uh, shuffle week, she said, so I, I went over and she said, uh, take a chair, so I was just going out the door with it. <laughs> I said, no, 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 come back here. She said, no. She said, sit down. She said, now, I'll have to take a few particulars of you. She said, now, what was your last position? <laughs> so I said, well, I had my legs over the back of the <laughs> bed. And I, I said, no, no, that way. No, no, she said, I, I want to know, what, what, what is your job? What, what have you done for a living for the past? I, I said, well, actu actually, in my profession, 
I'm a coronation programme seller. <laughs> so uh, that, that, that didn't help. She said, um, she said, can, can you do anything else? I said, well, I'm, I'm very good at milking yaks. <laughs> so she said, well, there aren't many yaks in South Kensington High Street <laughs> at the moment. She said, um, anything else you, you can lay your hand to? I, I said, well, I, I can make loose covers for lighthouses. <laughs> Oh, she said, I, I think we're going to have a bit of a problem with you. <laughs> she said, well, go back and, and sit, on, sit on that bench. She said, I'll, I'll call you if I find anything. So I, I went back, and I, I was only sat on, on this form for about, oh, two minutes, and this woman walked in. My God, you should have seen it. She was all done up, you know. Uh, she got the br brogues on and a two-piece tweed suit. And a deer stalker hat <laughs> and the <a> ginger moustache. <laughs> <laughs> so she came over to me, she said, Are you looking for work, my good woman? <laughs> I don't know how she knew. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said, Yes, I am. So she said, Well, there's my card. I'm from the women's lib. She said, now, if they find you a job, we'll fight the case. <laughs> anyway, I, I had no need after that to say a word, because suddenly this old girl behind the bar, she called me, she said, Shovelwick, she called me over again. Shovelwick, she said, now, I've found you a job. She said, now, it's, it's not a lot of money, but at least it's regular. She said, now, uh, it, it's as a, as a bunny girl <laughs> in, a, in a fish and chip shop. <laughs> <laughs> in the Edgware Road. <laughs> so I, I thought, well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. <laughs> So I went up there, and oh my God, it was, it was a dreadful place. This old Greek in charge of it, and the place stank to high heaven. <laughs> anyway, I, I thought I'm, I'm going to stick it. I'll do it. I'll do it to the end of the week. You know. <laughs> and I went. And he, sh he showed me how to do all, all the chips in the basket and and, and and the fish battering and all that. Oh God. And I, I stuck it right through until the Saturday night and it got to about half past ten and I thought to myself, thank Christ. I thought, I, I've only got another hour and a half to go and I'll be finished. I'll get me money and I'll piss off. <laughs> so ab about quarter to eleven, just as I, I, I thought we were going to, you know, pack up and leave, this little snotty-nosed kid came in. He was only about 12. He hardly came up to the bar. And he said, um, Can I have some chips? <laughs> I, sa I said, listen, I said, when you come into an establishment like this <laughs> and you, you speak to a lady like me, I said, you want to learn your manners? I said, now look, what I'll do, I'll give you a lesson. I said, now you come round here behind the counter and I'll come round there and I'll show you how it's done. So I, I put him behind the counter and I went out to sort of make my way in and I went up to the counter and I said, ah, oh, good evening, young man. I said, now, do you think it would be an awful imposition on my part if I were to ask you if I might purchase <laughs> ten pennyworth of rather charming chipped potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so he said, fuck off. <laughs> So I, I, I said, I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you wouldn't f serve me. I'm not serving you. <laughs> uh, it makes you think, doesn't it? Do you know? Do you know? Not, not so, not so, not so long ago. I, uh, when, it, when I was in the money, when I, when I was working uh, in, in the theatre, I, um, I'd saved up a few bob, and I thought to myself, I'll, I'll have a bit of a holiday, I'll go to Spain. So I went down to the travel office uh, to see this fella, and he said to me now, he said, uh, you, you, uh, that my taxi? <laughs> He said, now, he said, now, you be down at London Airport on Monday morning at half past eleven, on the dot, he said, the, the plane leaves at half past eleven, he said, you have plenty of time for a few Guinnesses, he was right, I had thirty-five, <laughs> and... As I say, I, I got down to London Airport and I, I got on, I was the first one on the plane and it was empty and, and all these seats, well I got my seat, I got my seat which was F69. <laughs> I, I thought, well that's a good omen. <laughs> anyway, I sat down. And I, I don't know if I can explain this to you properly, but do, do you know, um, at the back of the seat, in the seat in front of you, of the one you're sitting behind, there are all these brochures, you know, that you can read about what's going to happen to you and all that. <laughs> and I was reading this one, and it said that the, the plane we were going to fly on was 4,000 horsepower which I, I thought was marvellous, you know, until I looked out of the window and I saw them walking all these horses up and down <laughs> outside. Anyway, I, I didn't bother about it, and of course the plane filled up and the doors slammed, and then the air woman came round, the hostess one, tart, <laughs> and she said, uh, ha have a couple of these, dear, they'll stop your ears popping. Well, I mean, it's all very nice and all that, but I mean, you feel such a fool with a couple of licorice all sorts stuck in your ear holes, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> and before I had any chance to say anything, suddenly, over the intercom, came this, this voice, all dark brown. Oh, it was like Gregory Peck in a thunderstorm. <laughs> and he said, this is your captain speaking. <laughs> oh, my vest went up and down my back like a Venetian <laughs> blind. <laughs> yes. He said, now, uh, welcome aboard. He said, we hope you'll have a, a very good flight there. And he said, if you go over on to the left-hand side of the plane, you'll find the bingo hall. <laughs> and if you go over on to the right-hand side of the plane, you'll find the cinema. And he said, if you come up to the front of the plane, you'll find the tennis courts. He said, all that remains for me to do is to get this <laughs> off the ground. <laughs> Well, I don't know what happened, but su suddenly th th there was a <laughs> you know, and, and we were up, we were in the clouds. Oh, they were all floating past and everything. Well, I don't know I if you're like me, but I, I always get sort of um, 
stuffed up. <laughs> no, I, I do. When I'm a plant, I can't breathe. And I thought to myself, well, I'll open a window. <laughs> so I, I'd only opened it, what, a, a, about two inches. And this fella next to me, he shot off. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much as goodbye or, <laughs> or kiss my passport or anything. <laughs> oh, they're, they're, they're no manners, have they, some people? Anyway, I, I got to Spain, and I, I must say, I, I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> I didn't, well, I, they've got no pubs over there, you see. All they've got are these estaminets, you know, with the umbrellas stuck up outside. That's where you have to drink. you think for the price of them, they'd ask you in, wouldn't you? <laughs> <Got them. laughs> no, I, oh, I, I came back, dear, I came back. I thought, forget that. <laughs> no, I, I came back and I, I'd still got half my money left, so I, I thought, I thought Blackpool, that's the place, Blackpool. So I got the train up to Blackpool, and uh, of course, I, I, what I didn't realise, it was the middle of August, and of course, everywhere, everywhere was full. And I, I tramped the streets, I walked round and round and round, and I thought, well, uh, after about two or three hours, I thought, well, I'll have to go back to London. Anyway, I, I was just going back to the station, and I looked up a little side turning, and I saw this beautiful little pink house with roses round the door, and all that, cobblers. <laughs> and I thought, ah, there, there's a place I'd like to stay. So I went up, and I knocked on the door, and the uh, window went up on the first floor, and the woman put her head out, ever so nice. She said, what do you want? <laughs> I said, well, I'd like to stay here. She said, well, there's nothing <laughs> stopping you, and she put the window down again. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't going to be outdone. I, I knocked on the door again, and she came down, she said, what do you want? I said, look, I, I would like to stay here for a week. I've had rather a, a grueling time. So she said, well, come in and wipe your feet, put your bags down. And she said, I'll show you the room. And we went up. My God, it was like going up Everest. <laughs> it was about 14 flights, and I was shown into the attic. And she said, now, I'll go in first and close the door, and then I'll open it, you can come in. <laughs> so I went in, and she said, now, close it again, otherwise you won't be able to breathe. <laughs> she said, now, um, I hope you'll be able to make your own bed. I said, well, I'm, I'm a housewife, I, kn I know how to do that, I've been doing it for years. You know. So she said, well, there's a hammer and some nails over there, and then put some bread. And then she took me over to a slit in the wall. <laughs> it looked like a, a Norman castle. She said, uh, on a clear day, you can see the sea from here. She said, you'll find a telescope on the mantelpiece. <laughs> I said, well, it's very, very kind of you, madam. I'm sure I'll be very happy. And I went downstairs with her, and she, I said, well, what about the, uh, the bre oh, breakfast? She said, well, it, that's uh, rather strict. She said, breakfast, eight o'clock. She said, you'll find a kipper nailed on the back of the door, <laughs> and you wipe your bread on it the same as everyone else. <laughs> I, I said, what, what about the evening meal? She said, well, that is from six o'clock till two minutes past. But I enjoyed myself, I went up there and I got, I, got, oh, I got back to my own place in London. And you know, quite honestly, apart from what all people say about uh, jogging about the world and all this, it, you, you're better off in, in your own place to have already. 
That's if you can afford to pay the rent. <laughs> well, it is. Oh, we had to move away, cost the rent we couldn't pay. The moving van came round just after dark. There was me and my old man shoving things inside the van, which we'd often done before, let me remark. Oh, we packed all we could pack in the van, and that's a fact. We got inside all we could get inside. Then we packed all we could pack on the tailboard at the back till there wasn't any room for me to ride. Now, my old man. Such a mess. I don't know the new address. I don't even know the blessed neighborhood. And it looks as if I might have to stop out half the night. And it ain't gonna do me any good. Now I don't make no complaint. But I'm, I'm coming over faint. What, what I need now is a good substantial feed. And I sort of kind of feel if I don't soon have a meal, I shall have to rub the linnet of his seed. So Thank you.